Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will continue the model validation topic in NetCore 7, and it will be dedicated to in-model validation based on the iValidatable object interface and its method validate. iValidatable object is a very concise and convenient approach to validating a model, as the validation is conducted directly inside the model class. With this approach, you don't need to write the logic outside of the model class. It's quite convenient, meaning that the explicit model validation we discussed in previous lessons using the model is valid property is not required for this approach. The iValidatable object interface is primarily used for in-model validation. In the case of a custom class representing a business rule or a complex data structure, we can still use iValidatable object to validate its properties. This allows it to be used for in-model validation and also as an instance to validate other different models. However, as I mentioned, it primarily used for in-model validation. Let's consider any model class, such as the planet model. To implement validation, we inherit from iValidatable object to gain access to the validate method. Implementing it generates the signature automatically, allowing us to write our custom logic inside. The validate method takes a validation context parameter and returns an I enumerable validation result. Validation result object represents validation errors, and the I enumerable validation result enables the caller to iterate through the validation results. And inside the method, we usually have two approaches. Let's explore the first one. In this approach, we create a variable named results to hold a collection of validation result type. We then use an if check to verify whether the name property is null or empty. If true, we add a validation result instance to results with a specific error message, indicating that the planet name is required. We use an array initializer and the name of operator, passing the name property as a parameter. To make it more extensive, we duplicate the first if check and verify if the diameter property is less than or equal to zero. If true, we provide an error message stating that the diameter must be a positive value, using the name of operator with the diameter as a parameter. The return statement then provides the results. That's the first approach, where we consume memory by creating a variable. However, there is another approach. Let's comment out the variable results and duplicate the string with results add. Change it to yield return. Repeat the same approach for the second if check with yield return. Comment out the return statement as well. Using yield in this context can be beneficial in scenarios where a large number of validation rules generating results lazily. This can potentially improve performance, especially if not all validation rules need to be evaluated in every scenario. For both scenarios, you need to consider memory usage, lazy evaluation, and performance considerations. With that, we have completed the model logic. Now let's add the required code to the controller. As an example, let's consider the insert single method. After the planet variable, we need to add an if check. Even though I have explained explicit model validation in detail in previous lessons, let's include it for this example. The if check will be triggered if the model state is invalid. Inside, we can use a bad request with a conspicuous message. For example, error from model state is valid. And the second parameter will be the model state itself. If this part is still unclear, Please refer to the previous lessons, it was explained in detail then. Now let's add custom logic for the validation context. A variable will refer to the validation context, providing contextual information about the object being validated, which is the planet object. The validation result variable will hold the collection of validation result to store the results of the validation. Here we also need to add an if check with a negated validation try validate object which takes four parameters. First, it will be the planet variable, then validation context, next is validation results, and the last one is true. The validator try validate object method is used to perform validation on the planet object, and planet is the object to validate. Validation context is the context for validation, providing information about the object being validated. Validation results is a collection to store the validation results. Finally true indicates whether to validate all properties, including nested objects or only top-level properties. In this case true means all properties, including nested ones, will be validated. 
the method returns true if the object is valid and false if there are validation errors. So the return statement will be bad request with a message like custom validation error. And we can include an error parameter with validation result select method. With this, all validation logic is completed and we can proceed to testing. If I scroll to the top, you will notice that the API controller attribute is active, meaning model validation will be handled implicitly by the framework. In case the model is not valid, this if check with model state will not be reached. Let's open Swagger. In the post request, we can add any random information. As you remember, the custom model validation we created performs a check if the diameter parameter is greater than zero. Additionally, both solar system ID and water ID require correct GUIDs, which you can easily copy by sending a GET request from Swagger. Alternatively, you can copy them from the database using SSMS. I'll copy them from Swagger, it makes no difference actually. If we send the POST request, we receive an error with the message CUSTOM VALIDATION ERROR and error diameter must be positive value. Upon opening the model, we can see that the error is originating from the CUSTOM MODEL VALIDATION. The message is generated from the controller where the logic is implemented. So this part is working as intended. Now let's remove the description field and send the request. Instead of triggering the custom model validation, we activate the model validation conducted by the framework and the API controller attribute. Now let's comment out the API controller attribute. And from Swagger, I will send the POST request again. We receive an error with the message coming from the IF check, indicating that the model validation is conducted explicitly. Error from model state is valid. The error message is provided by the framework, saying that the description field is required. If I open the model, we will see it contains the required attribute with the custom message. To trigger it, we need to comment out the explicit if check with the model validation. Now, if I send a request, we get the message from the controller's custom logic, custom validation error, and the error required attribute custom error message. It's coming from the required attribute decorating the description property. The required attribute can provide us with a custom message indicating that the property is required, which can also be provided by the framework if we uncomment the API controller attribute. If I uncomment it and send a request from Swagger, the framework will stop at the model validation and the custom if check will not be performed. Let's bring back the description property. And now, if I send a request, the expected error that the diameter must be positive is provided. Since I have covered the majority of the validation topics in Netcore 7, in the next lesson we will implement the required validation for the project. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!